the starting lineup for the Hoosiers. We expect to see a 6-2 tonight from the Hoosiers. So that means, of course, Cam Hayworth would be setting when she's in the back row. And Shade Ilawole may come in and set out of the back row as well. And the Huskers, very similar starting lineup. Murray, Beeson, Riley Rodriguez, they've started every match this year. Taylor Landfair for the 11th consecutive match in the starting lineup for the Huskers. It's another sellout at the Devaney Center. Good crowd on hand, ready to go. As Nebraska has won 39 consecutive home matches, looking for an even 40 tonight. And they'll take on a 5-10 and 10 Indiana team coming off a sweep in Iowa City on Thursday night at the hands of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hoosiers lost that 18, 22, and 21. Nebraska, of course, coming off that win on Thursday night here at home against the Golden Gophers. One that went four. Huskers won it three to one, but snapped their 15 consecutive set winning streak. Yeah, and talking to the Hoosiers earlier, it was really sad to hear that both Hayworth and Steve, their head coach, had mentioned that they thought that, that that loss to Iowa was their low light of the season. It was yeah. just got them down bad, and they were already coming off a very emotional day, which we'll touch on later, but definitely looking to bounce back here tonight. So we'll see what these Hoosiers got in them. A lot of top spin jumpers for this Hoosier team. You saw one there from Cam Hayworth as they start out in rotation one. Bump set outside. Landfair off the block, and Landfair gets the first kill of the match. Taylor Landfair, that's a smart play to recycle that ball. She tips it right into the block, gives her team another chance to get a better transition play. And she takes that ball high off the blocker's hands and right to an undefendable location. Olivia Mauk now to serve. Just off the fingertips, not down. And we're going to have the lead out. So it was outside the antenna on the return and a point for Nebraska. Yeah, I just think a little mismatch on that timing there. As we've mentioned, Indiana is probably going to be playing with a different lineup here tonight. So you can see those kinks that they're trying to iron out here early on. Upset goes outside. The swing not down by Cortez. Ramsey Geary with the bump serve. Alonso Cortez again. There was a touch, and Alonso Cortez gets her first kill of the match. Yeah, that's a fantastic set there from the libero, Ramsey Geary. She's been so impressive this entire season. She puts that ball up perfectly, and her outside's able to go high hands. Great shot, great kill. Morgan Riley runs the middle. And the kill for Rebecca Alec. John Cook, season number 25 on the bench for the Huskers, looking for win number 715 as he inches closer to 900 career wins on the bench between his two head coaching stints at Wisconsin and Nebraska. That into the net. He's definitely one of the best. There's no denying that. Back to serve for Indiana, number six, Kenzie Daphne. In all his years on the bench with Nebraska, he's never had as many wins against top 10 teams as they have this year. They have six wins this season against other teams ranked in the top 10. That's why their RPI is number one. Good dig there. Great up by Hayworth. Goes outside, but they have down. The other side tried the line. Maddie Saris with the swing. And it's a long point for Indiana. Steve Aird in his seventh season on the bench with Indiana, of course, came from Maryland. Prior to that, he was an assistant coach for Russ Road, played volleyball at Penn State, two-time captain, helped the Nittany Lions to three appearances in the Final Four when he was playing. 
Serve is just long. Another dangerous top serve, top spin serve from Indiana. They are high ace, but high error. They lead the Big Ten Conference in service errors. That's to be expected almost with the top spin serve. I mean, you see it's a lot more aggressive. It's a lot more pace on that ball. So naturally, there's going to be a couple more errors. But they are a really, really tough serving team. And they know that that's one of their strengths and one of the things that's going to help apply pressure to this Nebraska team here tonight. Avery Tatum with the kill on the slide. Tatum's been so impressive this year. You see there she goes off one foot behind. They've been working on that a lot this year, trying to perfect that connection. But uh, as you see there, success early on, but be prepared for a lot off of two feet on both sides of the net, whether it's the left or the right. Well, that dropped right in that deep corner and the ace for Tatum. Incredible serve there. This is what I'm talking about with their service pressure. They know they have to get Nebraska out of system. They get after it. She drops it right on that end line. Perfect serve. Riley on the second touch. And the dump. It's a great time to use that dump early on in the game. The teams are so worried about the hitters that Bergen just takes that ball right over for a side out. Perfect pass right up at the net right in that donut between the two defenders. It's a smart shot. Coming off one of her better matches of the year in terms of offense against Minnesota. She had six kills, hit 500. Yeah, that was a really impressive night for Bergen Riley. She really carried that team. They have moved to the 6-2 and they run the middle. And the kill from Maddie Sell off of the set of Ila Wole. I love that the middles are getting going early here for Indiana as we get another replay here. It's a good pass. Perfect set. Goes right over the top of Andy for a kill. Back row. Over on the second touch by Sell, but not down. Ilawole keeps it up. That swing is wide from Alonso Campeas. Check out this defense from Bergen Riley. Oh, Laney Choboy keeps that ball up. Great out of system play. And just a miss right here. As she's going for those hands of Andy Jackson to take that ball out of bounds, but misses him by that much. Rushes the tape on the serve by Kennedy Orr. Pump set over. Opportunity here for Nebraska back row. Harper Murray. Not down, but they'll send it back over. Another opportunity here for the Huskers. On the slide goes Becca Allen. Into the block and Alec with the point for the Huskers. Rebecca Alec making a great move to the outside there. Timing's a little bit off, but she still finds a way to get her hands up right where that ball is going to be. See, she keeps that hold, keeps those hands pressed up, because even on your way down, you can still get touches, and you see it there. Pushed out into the antenna. Tried to go in line, but Alonso Cortez hits the antenna on the swing. It's the right idea, though, trying to attack over Bergen Riley. She's a much smaller but still very efficient blocker than Merritt Beeson, so trying to take advantage of when the setter's front row is, it's the right call, but just hit it too far to the line. That Good pass, insistently low goes behind him. Ramsey Gary, bump set, back row swing. Was there a touch? No touch. Indiana said right away there was, and Steve Aird goes straight to the challenge card. Yeah, I, I think there's a touch on this one. We'll get another replay here with this challenge. But I'm pretty sure that went off of Rebecca Alex's hands. Original decision, ball out. Indiana is challenging block touch. Our R2 Patty Rolf. see it there. 
Maybe not. Tough to see. I think this will be hard to overturn, but I, in seeing it live and playing this game, I, I could see a touch off of Bergen Riley. She gets those inside left hand, those pinky finger, ring finger, goes right off her fingertips and out. So you're she saying, sells it well, though. So you're saying because even though we can't see it, and it's not obvious that because you played, you know there was a touch. I mean, <laughs> it's also the way that they react. Like, okay. she's trying to sell it. Harper, I know that Harper sees that touch. She's kind of hoping and praying that no one else saw it, but we'll see. We deal in data here, Lawrence Stevens. <laughs> we deal in data. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm seeing fingertips move. All right. Okay. Well, I've seen that pinky move. Yeah. Right. So if we look behind, does it go over the pinky then? If we look from the other angle, that does. Yeah. You might be right. We'll see. Has to be definitive. Steve Air thought so. He says, oh, absolutely. Yeah, right away he grabbed that challenge card. Didn't even have to ask the team. Steve Aird going to land one of the best recruiting classes in Indiana volleyball history, coming off a year in which they had a, a top five class. He's really building something nice in Bloomington. It's been a tough year this year. There have been so many injuries they've had to deal with and without going through each one and each player. Let's just say there are several on the floor tonight who have been battling. It's one of the reasons we're seeing Indiana run a 6-2 here tonight. Yeah. We had no idea what the starting lineup was going to look like here tonight, and but he's still making the most of it. He, I asked him earlier today at Serve and Pass, like, what do you want your legacy to be with this program? And he mentioned that he just wants volleyball to matter in Indiana, and he is the way that he's turned around this program already so far. Like, you see students going to the games, and they're competing the with the best of the best. And no touch, the ball is out. Point Nebraska. Indiana loses their challenge. So they will say no touch. And Steve Aird loses the challenge. Well, I'll tell you, there's there's somebody in Indiana and Bloomington who's made football matter this year. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Coach Signetti. Yeah, they're doing amazing things over there with the sports in Indiana. I love to see that. Kennedy Orr now to serve. Tough pass. Rolled down the line. From off the net, reaching behind her but getting the kill was Taylor Lanfair. That's a great high snap of right here. She transitions all the way back. Bergen Riley puts up a great ball and she takes it deep to the corner. It's such a hard ball to defend. Nebraska on a 5-0 run. They trailed 6-5. Ran the middle, good block touch there by the Huskers. Right back outside, Landfair again off the touch. Into the net called on the Hoosiers and Nebraska in the middle now of a 6-0 run. Shade, what an incredible set you see here for Indiana. She is only five foot two, but she finds a way. Oh, not that play. She finds a way to get her hand on that tight ball to the net. One hand sets her middle. That is really tough to do, being that small, but she's so physical, makes it work. Good block touch on the swing by Harper Murray. Back outside, Nebraska's block. Riley got her hands on that. She sure did. Bergen Riley with a perfect setup here on the pin, able to shut down that ball. She saw that they were trying to attack her earlier. Puts up those hands perfectly here. Gets the stuff. Huskers on a 7-0 run early. They lead it 12-6. Oh, I love this. Shopping during the holidays can be fun and stress-free with an Eglin Federal Credit Union MasterCard. With low rates and no annual fee, enjoy surprising the ones you love. Eglin Federal Credit Union, where members matter most. Y'all see this? Patrick Mahomes is safe. Go. Well, tomorrow more volleyball comes your way when 8th-ranked Purdue hosts the Fighting Illini. Coverage begins 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Raina Terry, Eva Hudson there. Two of the top outsides in the conference. Well, those are two players who are fun to watch. 
Nebraska right now on a 7-0 scoring run out of the timeout. Bergen Riley with the block again. Sit back and that time, Rebecca Alec. Bergen Riley is doing such a great job at the net right now. She is making moves outside of her body. She gets this first one and then they go right back to it and she gets it again. But you see here, she's reaching into the court, closing up that block. She can feel Rebecca's not quite there. That's such high level blocking from Bergen Riley. Good service run here by Kennedy Orr. Corteus, the swing from behind, not down. Free ball over, another good opportunity. What, free ball pulls her off the net, the tip into the middle, and how about that? Harper Murray catches some roasted marshmallows. She sure does. That's a great that's a great choice, especially when she's a little bit off balance. Again, you said that free ball pass wasn't necessarily perfect. Bergen's on the 10-foot line, puts up a hittable ball, and Harper's right there and puts it right into the donut. Tough serve by Orr. There was a touch called. And are we gonna have a challenge? It's a 9-0 scoring run. Is John Cook gonna pull the challenge card? Huskers immediately said there was no touch and there is our second challenge here of set number one on the swing by Alonzo Cortez did Nebraska have a touch. Original decision, Nebraska hit the ball out. Nebraska is challenging, uh, or, excuse me. Original decision, Nebraska had a block touch. Nebraska is challenging no touch. We know what you meant, Patty. It was Indiana's point. Would it be Nebraska's? Was there a touch there? Yeah, I feel like anytime a team challenges that there was no touch, it's pretty clear that they didn't touch it because why would you challenge that? But yeah. um, but you never know. Again, this one's really close. And if the original call was touch, it's going to be hard to overturn and say no touch. But we'll see here. The play is reversed. There is no touch. Nebraska retains their challenge. Ball is out. So there you have it. Nebraska now on a... 10-0, I believe 10-0 scoring run, might be 9-0. It is 9-0, 9-0 Nebraska scoring run, scoring now 15-6. Yep. It is a 10-0 run. My stat monitor hasn't caught up. 10-0 run. Yeah, short run. Boy. Free ball opportunity here for the Hoosiers. Pushed outside. Big swing, but not down. Point for Nebraska. Back row attack called on the Hoosiers. Yeah, they're running a 6 2 tonight, which we mentioned was new. So Cam thought she was up there in the front row. Oh, or maybe she just met. She is in the front row right now. Yeah, she must have hit that net on her follow through. Still a great swing, and I hope to see more of that here tonight. Morgan Geddes into the game with that left pin now. Geddes with that big swing. Cross court. What a shot by Landfair. Taylor Landfair with a really physical swing here on the outside. Able to get that thumb down. Really sharp court. Cross court shot. An absolutely amazing swing here. It's a little bit out of system. Gets her whole hand on that ball. There's no defending that. Right on the line, painted it by Landfair. A great thumb down action from Landfair. She's taken over that starting role. 
from Lindsey Krause. What have you seen that you liked out of the play of Taylor Landfair over these last 10 or 11 matches where she's been in the starting lineup? Yeah, you can tell she's getting more and more comfortable in her role. I think it's been different for her to transition from a six rotation to player to just a three rotation player. But she's making the most of her time. She's getting great touches up on the block, and she's working really hard in transition to put balls away and help out in any way she can. I think she's really buying in finally to Nebraska volleyball and yep. and it shows. She's she's smiling out there. She's having so much fun. She's involved in so many plays. You just saw her with that bang bang play when Lainey Choboy barely kept yep. that ball up. She was there to punch it up and keep it up. So I really like what I'm seeing from Taylor Landfair here. Last weekend on the road, Landfair 13 kills and 10 kills in the two wins against Oregon and Washington. In both of those games, just four hitting errors. And against the four new teams in the Big Ten Conference, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, she's hitting 533 against those four teams. Wow. She's just so physical. She's able to get such a high snap on the ball, which even if you do put a block up in front of her, she can work around and work over and use it to her advantage. And she's got all the shots. She can hit it super sharp on that cross court shot. She can turn it down the line. She can, she's really, really great at tooling off blockers hands with like power tips and stuff like that. So she's a really great offensive weapon for the Huskers. Nebraska is still in the middle of that 12-0 run and off serve received the overpass. Alec tips it over. Great hustle by Ramsey Gary who gets to just about everything on that side of the net. Tip not down. Good heady play there by Sell. Then tipped over and out and a point for the Hoosiers ending Nebraska's 12-0 run. Yeah, much needed side out by them. Unfortunately, it comes at an error by Harper Murray. You'd want the Hoosiers to kind of earn their side out, but that's what happens in this game, and it was a really, really smart decision by Harper. You saw that no one was there. No one even hit the ground for that, so had that been in, it would have been a smart shot, but the Hoosiers really needed that one. Luca Fickle now into the game. The sophomore setter out of Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Ursula Academy. Her father is the head football coach at Wisconsin, Luke Fickle. And Luca Fickle long on the serve. It's unfortunate when that happens, but it does happen. And um, you can see here, Indiana is kind of struggling in this first set to try and find any sort of rhythm. So they're just doing anything right now to try and make a change and get some momentum back on their side. And we're seeing players on the floor here for the Hoosiers who have not seen a lot of playing time this year. We mentioned the, the injuries and trying to limit swings and limit plays for the players. And that swing is wide. And Nebraska now on top by 12. Yeah, Indiana making yet another change. But that's what happens against a great team like Nebraska. They start to exploit those weaknesses and those different changes. They really attack when someone new gets put into the game. and. It's working really well for the Huskers so far. That's yeah, so what Pompeius with the swing. Not down. Here's Merritt Beeson who goes off the top of the block. And Merritt Beeson with her second swing of the match, first kill. It's a really great swing here from Merritt Beeson. She gets the block touch, transitions, great high snap, uses those blockers' hands to tool them off down the line. Merritt coming off a tough match against the Golden Gophers. Second service error for. Nebraska. Back in is Avery Tatum for the Hoosiers. And Cam Hayworth, the lefty top spin jumper, back at the service line. Tip by Beeson. In the middle, Rebecca Alec off the side of the hands of Ava Vickers. And Alec with another kill. Yeah, a little miscommunication on Indiana's side leads to the free ball for the Huskers. And this is so good from Rebecca Alec. It's a little bit of a low set, but she makes an adjustment to take it off the hands, keeps that ball in play. That's a great swing from Rebecca. Slide down the line, and good touch there by Avery Tatum as she goes behind the setter. 
Tatum really good off one foot. It's just the injuries have limited her. We've seen a lot of 31 balls to her this year. Yes. More in front of the settled than behind off one foot. Yes, definitely. But you can see that the Huskers are respecting mm. that she is such a powerful hitter. They're back on defense, We're ready for that heavy ball to come their way, and she tips it and finds the floor. Beeson picks up kill number two. And Rodriguez now back to serve. Over pass, Harper Murray. Second kill for Murray. That's a great play up at the net there, being aggressive with it, not allowing anyone to have a chance at playing that ball, throwing it straight down, especially when the setter's in the back row and she can't get up there and block. Swing, Mount tried to dig it with one hand, but Maddie Saris puts it down. Sarah's one of the lone bright spots on Thursday night against Iowa. She had 13 kills, hit 345. Impressive numbers. It's a fantastic shot down the line there, just on the outside of Merritt Beeson, and you can see just out of reach for Olivia Mauck. Andy Jackson, look out, her first kill. Wow. <laughs> so athletic. Andy Jackson able to just absolutely soar into this ball. Not really anyone in front of her. Tease up. A perfectly placed ball. Set point for Nebraska. Good swing and a kill. Avery Tatum from that right pin. Tatum has got a really heavy arm, and she is, one thing about her, she loves to swing. And we just saw a tip from her. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that's the only tip we see from her tonight. She loves to put her hand on the ball, as you see there. back over right back to Saris again block touch for Nebraska on the slot Jackson point Indiana the Huskers are doing such a good job right now slowing balls down from Indiana it's so impressive to see the amount of not only stuff blocks that they've got this set but the amount of touches and slowdowns it seems like almost every single ball has been slowed down or worked on by the Huskers. Great swing. On second set point, Harper Murray goes off the block and gives set number one to Nebraska. The Huskers on a season-long 12-0 scoring run in that set number one, their previous long against A&M. That was a 10-0 run. First set goes to the Huskers. They win it 25-12. Nebraska on top, one set to nothing here at home. A lot of reason to be happy tonight at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Nebraska winning it, running away in set number one, 25-12. She's number six nationally with 11.1 assists per set, and she's on a roll tonight. Bergen Riley. Yeah, talk about a setter that can really do it all. She is shutting down Indiana from a blocking standpoint. She's in their heads from a setting standpoint. She is defending perfectly in the backcourt. Bergen Riley's all-around game is truly second to none of all the setters in the NCAA right now. She seems to be the most well-rounded and the most competitive. She is on a mission to not only prove that her team deserves all the hype that they're getting, but that she can be number one and she will be number one here at Nebraska. She stays on track with what she's been able to accomplish so far. Yeah, good swing there right down the line by Candela Orlanzo Cortez. Cortez out of Madrid, Spain. First Spaniard ever to play volleyball for the Hoosiers. Spent time with the Spanish national team. Struggling here tonight. Hitting negative 333 after that last kill. 
Rebecca Alec there with a great transition or service to play. Sees that there's an opening in the court. It's been working in the first set. A lot of Hoosiers crashing on one ball and not many of those have come up here tonight. So why fix what isn't broken? Keep at it. How about that? Yeah. Incredible block from Harper Murray here. She's pressed way over the net. Ready for that big, heavy arm. Such a great block. Basically one-on-one. -on -one. Ran the middle, deep corner. Great hustle by Ramsey Geary to keep it alive. Off the top of the block, Ramsey Geary again into the scorer's table to keep it up. And right into the block, and Rebecca Alec once again. Boy, she has been a force at the net tonight. Alec, that is her fifth block already. Wow. Rebecca Alec does such a good job of reading, especially on these scramble plays when all the hitters are all over the place. They set it perfectly into the back row. Two blockers up. Rebecca's hands are so strong there in the middle. Pulled back out of the net, then set over on the free ball. Barrett Beeson, swing is well wide. She had the opening there, middle hadn't gotten over, and she just smashed that long. That's right, she did see that opening, was going for it, just didn't finish that snap on her swing, kept her hand a little high. Hoosiers hitting negative 103 to this point in the first set they hit. Negative 091, that's the lowest hitting percentage in a single set this season. Down the line, good up by Rodriguez, but not kept on her side of the net. Kill there for Avery Tatum. Tatum does a great job of turning that ball down the line, and again, she has so much power. It's hard to control even for Lexi Rodriguez. Tatum was coached by her now assistant coach, Rachel Morris in high school at California. Yeah, I think they said there's four California girls yeah. in their roster. Alec, good connection tonight between Riley and Alec. Yes, the Huskers have definitely made this a focus recently, how to get Rebecca Alec more involved in the offense. And you see her working really hard, whether it's transition or in serve receive, to get up and make the most of her opportunities. Four swings, or eight swings, four kills for Alec. Getting right out 500. Look at Jackson fly over there. What an athletic play. And then off of Murray and wide, and the kill goes to Avery Tatum. Tatum, a bright spot here for Indiana. Yeah, she has five kills. She's carrying this team right now. They need to get a few more offensive weapons going, but she's doing her part. Right at 500, five kills, one error, eight swings. Murray off the touch from Vickers. Second touch swinging by Hayworth, who's in the front row. And then Harper Murray with the kill. That's a great dig by Lexi Rodriguez. She's ready for that over on two swing, doesn't panic, puts up a playable ball, able to run the offense, and Harper Murray just tools it off the block. Tough serve. Brushed it off the block. Andy Jackson, her second kill. Andy Jackson going right over the top of her blockers, taking it into the cross court. Great transition. She gets all the way back. Bergen Riley sets her nice and high so she can get a good snap on that ball, go over the blocker. Andy Jackson hitting 445 on the year. Into the antenna, off the swing by Maddie Saris. Yes, if I'm Bergen Riley, I'm gonna try and run Andy Jackson as much as I can right now. Because she's a middle or because she's Andy Jackson? Because she's Andy Jackson, but also because she's going over a 5'11 ah. middle blocker on the other side of the net here. So you think it's strategy? I do. I got you. Saris, down. 
Riley, Beeson under the back, wide. Small Baron Beeson with the right idea on a couple of swings, and we saw it against Minnesota as well. Just the execution right now, just a little off. Yes. And that happens from time to time, but they'll work it through. They'll figure it out. I just love when Merrick Beeson just rips the ball out of the back row, though. I'm like, none of the fancy stuff. Just get back to your power. It's one of the most athletic back row attacks I think I've ever seen. Service error by Delaney Maple. Huskers on a four to one run as Murray goes back to serve. Shot knocked down by Vickers. Sit back over and what a shot. Bergen Riley. Incredible location. That is such a tough ball to defend. Second kill for Bergen Riley. Fantastic dig here from Lexi Rodriguez to keep it alive. And she just goes over all the defenders. Bergen goes over all the defenders to that deep corner. And the tape is by Harper Murray. Seems everything is going the Huskers' way right now. Four kills for Harper. On 15 swings, she's hitting 133. Nebraska with their first piece of the match right there. That goes off of the block of Landfair. Vickers gets the kill. Yeah, Vickers, even though she is undersized, she is very athletic and she works really hard. She's really quick with her feet. As you see here, this ball's a little bit far out to the pin, but she gets there and works right off of Taylor Lanfair's hands. Kinsey Daphne with the serve wearing the other libero jersey tonight. Hoosiers have two wearing the libero jersey, and now she checks out. Back in comes Ramsey Gary. Kennedy Orr to serve for Nebraska. Yeah, the Hoosiers are passing with two right now, just trying to see if they can put up a hittable ball. They've been really struggling with their serve receive, so just a different look, and, and it seemed to work. Got it in the Huskers' head. Tatum back in. And now Hayworth in the back row. She'll set out of the back. You mentioned it off the top. She's the all-time assist leader for Indiana Volleyball. Set that record against Iowa on Thursday night. And there is Taylor Lanfair again off the top of the block. And a good swing by Lanfair, targeting hands. Yeah, Husker's able to control this ball here with a perfect pass and setting up a one-on-one -on -one situation for Taylor Lanfair, and I think she's going to win that matchup any day. Served by Riley. It's him out of system. Alec with the tip, diving up by Hayworth. Off the block and the kill by Alonso Corcelas. Yeah, Maddie Hayworth able to keep that tempo really, really quick to the outside there in transition. And Rebecca Alec not quite there, not quite close. You see it hits off her hands awkwardly and goes out of play. Bump set out, Barrett Beeson. No touch point for Indiana. Beeson hitting negative, two kills, three errors, seven swings, negative 143. Right back to her and a big block on the right side. Avery Tatum. Huge block by Tatum there. She's one on one with Merrick Beeson and Merrick gets a little excited. You know, right after that error, wants to bounce back and get another kill, and she gets a little too excited and hits it right into Tatum. Really solid setup there. Time out of the floor. 12-10, Nebraska with the lead here in the second. Panthers. 
Back here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, Nebraska on top 12, Tim. John Cook taking the timeout. Hey, this uh, Indiana program playing with a with heavy hearts this entire week. Assistant coach Kevin Hodge not with the team this week as his mom passed away four days ago, lost her battle with Alzheimer's. Kevin has been gone. He, he was gone last weekend, too, as they made the trip uh, to Maryland and Rutgers, didn't travel for that. And so this entire team wants to send uh, their thoughts and prayers to Kevin Hodge, his mom, Joan Hodge, passing away of Alzheimer's just four days away. And our thoughts and prayers certainly with the entire team and the Indiana program is they deal with a very tough situation being on the road as Kevin's mom passes away. Definitely. Volleyball is one of those sports where you get to know your teammates and staff so well. You're with each other every single day. So to hear about that and even the way that head coach Steve Aird was talking about his friend Kevin and how long he's known each other and they were teammates at Penn State and it's just really hard for the whole program and so our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family Kevin. The funeral will be next Tuesday the entire team going to the funeral obviously. And a lot of awareness around Alzheimer's with this team and raising raising funds for those who suffer from uh, Alzheimer's. There is Steve Aird, who played college volleyball with Kevin Hodge, and Hodge now in his second season as an assistant here at Indiana. 12 all here in set number two. Beeson got the kill. It's a really good play here from Merritt Beeson. She's been kind of struggling with her power and her shots and finding the court. So here she takes a little bit off it, finds those hands, and goes right to the donut. That's a great adjustment from Merritt Beeson. It's a nice 5 0 run for the Hoosiers. Pulled out of the net, Harper Murray with the swing. Down in the middle, off the top of the block, Maddie Sell back down. Still alive, Murray with another swing at it. And then finally, Rebecca Allen puts it down. That's a nice long rally. Both teams really scrapping defensively, but check out this dig from Olivia Mauk. One-handed. Stab at the ball. You see the finish here by Harper Murray. I think we're going to have a challenge. Indiana is challenging. Let's listen to Patty Rolf. She'll explain the challenge. The original decision was touch off the block of Nebraska. No four hits. Indiana's challenging four hits. So did it touch Indiana or not? Let's uh, see if we can see if there's a. That's the dig I'm talking about. Olivia Mauck, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> what a great play to keep this ball alive. Extends the rally. Bergen Riley getting everyone on the offense involved. It was the second time the ball was on Nebraska's side. The question is when Rebecca Alec hit it over. Did it hit tape and back on Nebraska's side, or did it touch the call stands, an Indiana player? There is a touch. Point, Nebraska. Indiana loses their challenge. Patty, with your answer, right on cue. Yeah, so Indiana out of challenges. Not a 
grimace there from Coach Aird. Malk with the serve. Overpass. Merritt Beeson. Yeah, that ball is not coming back. Such a great snap, straight down. You see two Huskers up there ready for it, but Merritt Beeson cleans it up. With the block touch. Mount with the up. Beeson again, sit back over a long. Merritt Beeson now up to five kills to match her five hitting errors. She's hitting right at zero and a timeout taken by Indiana. Yeah, Merritt really heating up here. Getting back to her power, great transition play. Gets her whole hand on that ball, gets her feet to the ball. Huskers on a 4-0 run. Timeout, Indiana. Do you know who number one is all time? No, I have no idea. Tracy Stalls. Oh, wow. Not surprised by that. No. Yeah. Stalls hit 473. You hit 468. And right now, if the season were to end, the 445 that Andy Jackson is hitting would be third all time. Last year, Andy Jackson in her freshman year hit 399, which is number 10 all time. So she's putting together a career in hitting percentage that could be the best ever. And I hope she does. There's not many people who can do what Andy can do. But the power, her vertical, like who she is as a person, again, like she has all the, the things that you need, the ingredients to be the most successful, and I really, I want to see it come to fruition. Merritt Beeson right in front of us working out of her park as she has now six kills to lead Nebraska. But she's just been more aggressive on her last few swings. Definitely, she's getting into a much better rhythm now. Her and Bergen were kind of a little bit off to begin the game, but the rest of the team carried, and now she's able to figure that out with Bergen, and you see them having great success in this set. Point for Nebraska. Lift called on the Hoosiers. That's a tough break for the Hoosiers. by Rodriguez, who regretted it immediately, but point to Indiana, Nebraska on a 6-2 run. Line. Definitely, she wants that one back. Whether it's to get into a better position or let that ball go out, you can see she's frustrated on that play. Great high snap swing to the corner, though. Keeps her guessing, keeps her honest. Ooh, what a swing. Andy Jackson again. So physical. So tough to stop this swing, especially with an undersized middle in front of her. Even that low set, she still finds a way to get her hand on top of it and put it straight to the ground. She's got a whip of an arm. Kind of kicks that elbow down and still able to get some heat on it. Second touch by Cam Hayworth. And she has a kill. She's got her second kill. That's the perfect location. She's a little bit on the move. Olivia Malk is a fantastic defender and she still finds a way to put it in front of her and get it to the ground. Delaney Maple. Top spin jump serve. Second touch. Good up. Lula Wole in the back row keeping that alive. And then Harper Murray gets the touch and the kill. Nebraska the first to 20. Fantastic dig again from Lexi Rodriguez. And then Harper's able to go right off that double block, those fingertips, and take it out of bounds. 
Second timeout of set number two for the Hoosiers. They've burnt both. We'll come back for the conclusion of set number two. Throwback night here at the Devaney Center. Throwback uniforms for the cheerleaders. Throwback uniforms for the Nebraska volleyball team. They're wearing their throw throwback scoreboard. I don't remember the old dot matrix score. Hey, they're playing the Bee Gees right now. That's <laughs> throwback. That's. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little depressed that that's, that's throwback. If yeah. we get into Glenn Miller band era, that's considered throwback. I don't know about the Bee Gees. Come on. There's a throwback uniforms. <laughs> Is that a big Bee Gees fan? Is that an Andy um, Gibb, Andy so Gibb girl? the first time I've heard of him. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, boy. You need to listen to, you to, listen to your 70s on 7 and serious a little more, Lauren. I got it. Okay. On the slide, Andy Jackson. Kept alive and back over. What a good hustle by Hayworth there to keep it alive. Three ball back over. Opportunity on the slide. Jackson with the kill. We saw great defensive plays on both sides of the net. Fantastic dig there on Andy's first swing. And the Hoosiers able to keep this alive. I don't know how. And then they go right back to Andy Jackson. Different swing, a little bit more inside this time. And she goes right over the block. Swing just long. A well, good shot there by Alonso Corteas, but just long. And now Nebraska three away here in set number two. So now they're going back to that 6 2 with Sade as the setter. They just subbed Cam Hayworth out. Why do you say Sade and not Iwa Lola? Um. <laughs> on the block on the left side, and the kill. Uh, I'm sorry, the block by Lanfair. I'm completely honest because it's easier. <laughs> I'm, I, I like that you're going with Sade, I like it. Big block on that left side. You all only pulls that out of the net. And leads to the kill by Alonso Corteas. Corteas, what an angle. She takes it thumb down right at that, at Taylor Landfair, who's playing off blocker defense, and it hits her right in the chest. So, what a sharp angle. Second libero jersey being worn by Kinsey Daphne out of Westfield, Indiana, the senior. In there for the jump serve. Jackson hammers away off the hands of Alonso Cortez and another kill for Jackson. And we have set point here in set number two. Pushes out. Taylor Landfair. Not down. Off the top of the block, and there's the kill by Alonso Corteas. I like that shot a lot more for Corteas. She's been struggling a little bit to find the court, but instead of trying to find the court, maybe just try and find those blockers' hands. Nebraska's got such a disciplined block, and they've always got two or four hands up there, so find those and use them to your advantage. Another set point here for Nebraska. Cam Hayworth back to serve. On the slide, Alec goes line and got it. Rebecca Alec having a terrific night. Five kills, 11 swings, no errors. And Rebecca Alec hitting 455. The Huskers are up 2-0, and when doing so this year, they are 21 and 0 on the year. Huskers cruising through two, 12 and 17. The scores, Nebraska on top here in Lincoln on the Indiana Hoosiers. Two sets to none. 
get four of the top six in attendance. Of course, Wisconsin right up there year after year. I mean, that record for decades belonged to Hawaii. I think we remember forever. Hawaii was up in the 4,000 night after night, and that would have been in the late 80s, mid 2000. I'm sorry, late 90s, mid 2000s. And it wasn't until it really started becoming popular in the Midwest, and then Penn State had their fantastic run, and people started taking notice. And now, to see what it is today is, as you said, it's remarkable. Definitely. Right on the line, great job on the swing there by Alonso Corteas. And the Hoosiers come out firing here in set number three on top 2-0. They sure do. Huskers have made some changes here in this set. They've Layla Blackwell in down the middle and Lindsey Krause in on the outside. Krause gets the kill. Good to see Lindsey Krause getting some time. A nice first swing here from Lindsey Krause. Bergen pulled all the way over there, so she's got a solid double block up in front of her and finds a way to chip the ball through. Have someone like Lindsey Krause come off your bench in set number three. Yeah. What a tremendous benefit. Yes. You just don't know when you get into the postseason when another Texas match might happen. Mm -hmm. And you would love to have somebody to bring off the bench to give you maybe a little bit of spark. I think this is what Nebraska's championship years. I think of the Mancuso coming off the bench to lead Nebraska and spark the Huskers in the postseason to a one. Definitely, yeah. The Huskers' depth is for sure going to be a benefit for them here at the end of the season when people start getting sick or breaking down or whatever it may be. It's really nice to have those options and for them to be people that could be all Americans too. Yeah, the way that they've been playing, it's it's really special for the Huskers. Layla Blackwell into the game and Layla Blackwell, all she's doing this year is hitting 500. She's incredible. Every time she gets a chance and a spot on this court, she makes the most of it as you see here. Great high snap over the block, turns it cross body. It's a smart shot. I love that Bergen Riley feels comfortable enough to set her two as she first comes in the game. Well, got the block touch over to Beeson. Beeson right between the block, inside the hands of Saris, and gets the kill. Yeah, Hoosier block unable to close that up on Merritt Beeson, so she finds that seam and places it right to the, to the court. Layla Blackwell actually used to be a Hoosier first couple of years of, in college before she transferred to San Diego. So this is mm, right. some of her old teammates and her old coach, see there? Sure. Good run in the middle of the kill by Maddie Sell. Sell did a really great job of turning that ball away from Layla Blackwell. She's up there right in front of her big hands. But she just turns that thumb down right at the last second. And Harper's not there to help and finds the floor. an aggressive attack. It sure was. Perfect pass here. Bergen's able to run her offense the way she wants to. That middle does a little hesitation step, thinking Layla Blackwell might get set. So a little bit late to close, and Harper takes advantage of that. Cross court, great swing there, and a kill by Avery Tatum. Tatum is looking really good off one foot. She's able to turn it down the line, and she's hit a couple balls cross court now. I hope to see more of that here in this third set when she gets back to the front row. Did not. Yep, there was a touch. Line judge behind the Huskers says there was a touch. Point Nebraska. Yep, Harper right here. Takes his ball high off the fingertips of Hayworth and right out of bounds. Slide to 
goes wide. Good dig by Rodriguez. Off the top of the block. Was there a touch? Nope. And a swing by Saris. Hit long. Yes. Check this dig out. Comes with so much heat. Oh, that ball's out. Lexi Rodriguez made a great play defensively. She had that slide ball hit right at her, and she controlled it perfectly. Oscars were able to get a shot out of it. Yeah, not that she got it up, but three-four pass, right? There was plenty that Bergen could have done with that. Yes. here from Andy Jackson knowing that she has a setter in the front row which means that the setter will be up with her on those tight passes she instead of hitting the ball is smart to go right over her and use her hands to just shove it right to the side of her great dig by Rodriguez again Harper Murray goes off the hands and out Nebraska on a run here 5-0 they lead it 10-5 let's take a look at the RPI Nationwide Nebraska number one you see Wisconsin Oregon Purdue I mean, look how many big ten teams are in the top 31 of the RPI Yeah, the big ten this year is it's pretty stacked I'm not at all surprised to the way that this sport is growing and evolving and It's really fun to see that even with all the new changes that the big ten is as competitive as ever you look at all of those teams that we just showed, all in the top 31 of the RPI, they will all make the tournament and all have an argument to host, right? I mean, those are those are top 16 type seats. Yeah. Have an argument, right? I mean, I'd be surprised to see nine teams from the Big Ten get first round, right? But I'm just saying. I mean, but they earned it. You see that with their RPI. They put in work. They deserve those hosting spots. Here is Nebraska's resume, number one in the RPI, 10 and one against other RPI top 25. That only lost to SMU on the road. And you see the key wins. And the one you don't see here is they also beat Purdue, right? So Louisville, Creighton, by teams that Nebraska has taken down. And there's a good swing on the outside. Alonso Cortez with another kill. She now has seven. You would think, though, you know, Nebraska still has Penn State, Wisconsin. Penn State on the road, Wisconsin here at home. It's the final home match for the Huskers this year. But given that resume, it would just be a shock to not see Nebraska at one of those top four and host all the way up into the final four. Yes, definitely. I think they still have to, like, earn that, right? Yep, and yep. we still have to finish out. They still have to finish out the season very strong. But from what we've seen so far, the Huskers are looking really good. And... It does seem like they deserve that spot. Um, so we'll see what happens and how they finish out the rest of this season. But the Huskers are looking really, really sharp these days. Off the top of the block, Randy Jackson right between the block. The oh, it's Layla, sorry. Layla. Layla Blackwell right between the block and the kill. Yep. Incredible play there. She transitions and is up on that slide. Hits it right between the block. Layla Blackwell works so hard. It's so fun to see her come out on the court and make a difference. And her teammates respect her so much. And I know the coaching staff really enjoys having her here too. And it's nice that she gets in and takes care of business. And hopefully we can see more of her. Hayworth now back to serve for the Hoosiers. And the net called on Indiana. Yeah. It's an 
unfortunate play, but she's being aggressive with her block. I mean, it happens, but you wish it wouldn't. Yeah, big time. She's just pressing over and hits it with her forearms. Good touch by Nebraska. And a free ball here for the Hoosiers. Great job by Blackwell again with the touch. And then no touch point, Nebraska. Shot long. 15 8, Nebraska with the lead. Fantastic play here from Layla Blackwell. She got so many good touches in that rally, and then this ball just sails out. Husker block working overtime. Y'all see this? Patrick Mahomes is saying goodbye. Patrick. People was tripping. Where are you going? He was actually saying goodbye to his old phone. I'm switching to the amazing new iPhone 16 for T-Mobile. It's the first iPhone built by Apple Intelligence. That's like peanut butter on jelly on gold. Get four iPhone wall and host all the way up into the final four. Yes, definitely. I think they still have to, like, or not right yep, and yep. we still have to finish out they still have to finish out the season very strong but from what we've seen so far the huskers are looking really good and it does seem like they deserve that spot um so we'll see what happens and how they finish out the rest of this season but the huskers are looking really really sharp these days off the top of the block Mandy Jackson right between the block. The spell, it's Layla, sorry. Layla. Layla Blackwell right between the block and the kill. Yep. Incredible play there. She transitions and is up on that slide. Hits it right between the block. Layla Blackwell works so hard. It's so fun to see her come out on the court and make a difference. And her teammates respect her so much. And I know the coaching staff really enjoys having her here too. And it's nice that she gets in and takes care of business and yeah. hopefully we'll, we can see more of her. Hayworth now back to serve for the Hoosiers. Unfortunate play, but she's being aggressive with her block. I mean, it happens, but you wish it wouldn't. Yeah, big time. She's just pressing over and hits it with her forearms. Good touch by Nebraska. And a free ball here for the Hoosiers. Great job by Blackwell again with the touch. And then no touch point, Nebraska. Shot long. 15 8, Nebraska with the lead. Fantastic play here from Layla Blackwell. She got so many good touches in that rally, and then this ball just sails out. Husker block working overtime. 15-8 in set number three. Nebraska with a two sets to none lead over the Vinny visiting Indiana Hoosiers. They were talking about the RPI and Big Ten teams. How about a look at the full RPI? And right now, your top four, Nebraska, Louisville, Pitt, and the Jays. Creighton Blue Jays are at number four. Penn State's also in there. You see Wisconsin in the top eight. Boy, that Louisville Pitt battle was a terrific one. 3 2, won by Pitt. A lot to play out here yet, Lauren, Definitely, right? Yep. Penn State, Nebraska still play. Wisconsin, Nebraska still play. I think Louisville and Pitt have one more battle against each other. Mm -hmm. but there are going to be some big matches down the stretch that will determine and dictate where those top four teams and who they are and where. That's for sure. So. Wouldn't it be crazy if there were two 
hosts in Nebraska, yeah. Creighton and the Huskers, that would be insane. I'm not sure how the other teams would feel going <laughs> to right. Nebraska in the middle of December, but. Yep. Louisville, Louisville ends the year this year playing Pitt at the Yum Center. That's in Louisville, obviously, where the Final Four is going to be played this year. And they also play against Stanford in Stanford. Oh, wow. Kelly Bus uh, Danny Busman Kelly taking her team out to Stanford to end the season before the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that'll be a really telling matchup. Good response here out of the timeout by Indiana. 15-10. Big swing. Blackwell again with the kill. Incredible high snap. You saw her take that other ball earlier in the set, crossbody. This one, she takes it a little bit wrist away with so much power. And that's against a fantastic libero. Down the line, but hit the antenna first. Maddie Saris has tried to go line a couple of times tonight and just brushed that antenna. Yeah, again, they're trying too hard to avoid the block. I think they'll find a lot more success in using the block. A little wrist flick, not down. Barrett Beeson right between the block. Good chase down by Ramsey Gary. But does not get back over the net. And Nebraska on top, 18-10, and on a 3-0 run. And Indiana will take its first timeout here in this third set. Huskers on top, 2-0. Oh. We are on the left, on the right, coming up. The Saturday night volleyball doubleheader rolls on when Sarah Franklin leads number six Wisconsin against UCLA. That's next only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And A.J. Cano, Holly McPeak standing by to bring you that battle as the Badgers go on the road in their first trip as Big Ten opponents out in UCLA. Well, they're enjoying this one here tonight in Lincoln. And for good reason, Nebraska on top by eight. They won the first one. 25-12, the second 25-17. Out of the timeout, run the middle, good kill. Nice swing there by Ella Borsema. Borsema out of Chera Husson, Indiana. Chera Husko, Indiana. Chera Husko, there we go. Chera Husko High School. Just a freshman, 6'2". That is a great swing out of a timeout, especially in that middle. Got a good pass by Andy. Ooh. And a fantastic serve to back it up. How about that. That is such a great serve mm -hmm. down that line, catching Harper. She doesn't know if it's in or out, but she goes to play it, but it's, it's a little too late. What a fantastic serve. a little bit was Blackwell, another point for the Hoosiers. Yeah, that ball set just a little too low. Layla unable to get under it like if she wants to, especially with the block camped out right in front of her. She comes back over. Got a hand on that and gets the kill. Good service run, though, for Ella Borsum. The Huskers are playing really clean up at the net, whether it's overpasses or jousts or what. You see here, she sees that ball is coming over instead of getting super aggressive and trying to hit it 
Indiana's coming in to put up some hands in front of her. She just does the smart thing and pushes it right back over. Good block touch by Jackson. Not the swing by Tatum. And that is just long. That's a good miss. It's an aggressive swing she, that's been working for her all night. She barely, barely misses it out of the backcourt. Back to serve goes Avery Tatum. Out of Solana Beach, California. Costa Canyon High School. How about Andy Jackson? Eight kills for Andy. She's hitting over 600. Incredible swing here from Andy Jackson. She makes herself available, gets out of the way of the serve receive passers so she can still run her route, comes back across and turns it the opposite way. She's so hard to defend. Five kills without an error for Andy Jackson, five in a row. She has eight total kills. Serve there is long. So Andy's numbers, eight kills, one error, 11 swings, 636. So her hitting average will go up from 445. Overpass, good opportunity here for the Hoosiers. Oh, just wide by Cameron Hayworth. Right idea by Hayworth. Super close to, unfortunately, yep. Indiana is out of challenges, so can't challenge that one. Nebraska 39 home wins in a row. It's the longest active streak in NCAA Division I. Hey, how about in Division II? It's the longest winning streak there. I love it. I love some Nebraska volleyball legends. The Lopers of Nebraska Party. Big swing and a kill by Ava Vickers on the slide. Yeah, Vickers sees that Andy Jackson's not quite there. She's making a late move, so she takes that ball across court and it hits right off Andy as she's putting her hands up. line another ace for the Hoosiers Hoosier serving really coming alive here in this third set I love that they're staying aggressive with it even given the score even given the fact that they're down two sets they know that their only way to climb back into this game is to attack from the service line and they're doing just that kill from that left pin Lindsay Krause Second timeout of set number three by Indiana. Nebraska is three away from the match. Reason to dance here in Lincoln, 22-17 in set number three. Nebraska already up two sets tonight as they look for the sweep here against the Hoosiers. Well, here are the teams that are still fighting for a Big Ten title. Nebraska obviously unbeaten, control their own destiny with wins over the teams that are chasing them in both Penn State and Wisconsin. But you know, Nittany, Nittany Lions have a couple of tough ones too. The good news for Nittany Lions is they're both at home. Badgers have to go on the road here in Lincoln to end the season. Yeah, you really never know what's going to happen. It is going to come down to that last game. And I love that this is how competitive the Big Ten is right now, that we're this close to being done, and we still have no idea who's going to come out on top. Really aggressive out of the timeout there from Hayworth. Even with the double block up in front of her, she is not afraid. She still goes up with that attack mindset and throws it to the ground.
play from Layla Blackwell. She's got a couple really powerful kills earlier in the set, and so it's a good time to switch it up and bring out the off-speed shots. touch. Krause, you wanted to touch. Murray wanted to touch. Everybody wants to touch. John Cook is throwing up the challenge card. Original decision, Nebraska hit the ball out. Nebraska is challenging block touch. Let's get another look at this here. Lindsey Krause with an aggressive attack. She is going for those fingertips and she seemed pretty confident and so did the rest of her team that there was a touch here. Yeah, you can see those fingertips moving. Right off of Tatum's fingers. It happened so fast. I don't. I don't know if the rest are going to pick up on it, but I'm seeing it. Block of Indiana, Point, Nebraska. Nebraska retains their challenge. Well, there's your answer. There we go. They did see it. They sure did. With the reverse, it's now 24-18. Nebraska for the match and the sweep. Great kill in the middle. That's Borsima again. Borsima off the bench. 6-2 freshman. Cherubusco, Indiana. I love that the Hoosiers are still fighting. They're yeah. down, but they're still giving it their all. They're going out swinging. That's what you love to see in a young team. Swing is wide and long, and that will do it. Nebraska has won. Another one at home and another sweep that is now 23 consecutive matches here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center and 40 in a row at home. Incredible stuff from the Huskers here tonight and throughout this season. It, it really is so impressive to see what they've been able to do, especially after last season ending the way that it did. They've definitely come out guns a-blazing, wanting to prove themselves, and they've done just that thus far, and I'm excited to see where they can carry this momentum and see how they finish out the Big Ten. They're on a roll, 40 in a row at home, 23 in a row this season. When we come back, we'll hear from the players and coaches. Stay with us.